Good morning and welcome to St. Columbus. Um, the orchestra here, um, we're, we're going to play the prelude and postlude today and we're delighted to have our friend Andrew Lee to direct us um, once again. Um, so um, we're playing all Purcell. The first piece we're playing is a Chaconie, uh, which was discovered in the archives of the British Museum and it's an absolutely wonderful place. Um, being a Chaconie or Chacon, it's on a, a fixed eight measure pattern. Uh, that sounds dry and academic, but in fact it's an extraordinarily passionate piece. If you know Dido's Lament uh, from uh, Purcell's uh, opera, um, then you'll recognize the passion in this piece. And if you also recognize the last piece that we're going to play for postlude, it's because you've been listening to Britain's Young Person's Guide to the Orchestra, and the piece, the movement that we play is the same movement that uh, Britain adopted.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. Your gates will always be open. By day or night, they will never be shut. God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins. Give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first letter to the Corinthians. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, I did not come proclaiming the mystery of God in lofty words or wisdom, for I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. My speech and my proclamation were not with plausible words of wisdom, but with the demonstration of the Spirit and of power, so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, though it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to perish. But we speak God's wisdom, secret and hidden, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this. For if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the human heart conceived, what God has prepared for those who love him. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything even the depths of God. For what human being knows what is truly human except the human spirit that is within? So also, no one comprehends what is truly God's except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit that is from God so that we may understand the gifts bestowed on us by God. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly, I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. I speak to you in the name of the one holy and living God. Amen. A weasel is wild. Who knows what he thinks? He sleeps in his underground den, his tail draped over his nose. Outside, he stalks rabbits, mice, muskrats, and birds, killing more bodies than he can eat warm, often dragging the carcasses home. Obedient to instinct, he bites his prey at the neck either splitting the jugular vein at the throat or crunching the brain at the base of the skull, and he does not let go. Once a man shot an eagle out of the sky, and he examined the eagle and found the dry skull of a weasel fixed by the jaws to his throat. Now, the supposition is that the eagle had pounced on the weasel, and the weasel swiveled and bit, as instinct taught him, tooth to neck, and nearly won. I would like to have seen that eagle before he was shot. Was the whole weasel still attached to his feathered throat, a fur pendant? Or did the eagle eat what he could reach? gutting the living weasel with his talons before his breast, bending his beak, cleaning the beautiful airborne bones. So begins Annie Dillard's memorable short story called Living Like Weasels. I saw a weasel last week, Ms. Dillard continues. He was ten inches long, thin as a curve, a muscled ribbon, brown as fruitwood, soft-furred, alert. His face was fierce, 
small and pointed as a lizard's, he would have made a good arrowhead. Miss Dillard's story is not about weasels only. She likes to watch animals, says she, because she is trying to learn or remember how to live. I might learn something of mindlessness, something of the purity of living in the physical senses and the dignity of living without bias or motive. The weasel lives in necessity and we live in choice, hating necessity and dying at the last ignobly in its talons. I would like to live as I should, as the weasel lives as he should. We could, you know. We can live any way we want. People take vows of poverty, chastity, obedience, even of silence by choice. The thing is, to stalk your calling in a certain skilled and supple way, to locate the most tender and live spot and plug into that pulse. This is yielding, not fighting. A weasel doesn't attack anything. A weasel lives as he's meant to, yielding at every moment to the perfect freedom of single necessity. So Annie Dillard's story and her own search speak profoundly of that thing which compels so many others, the search to live as we should, not should in the sense of a morally laden ought, rather as we were created to live, born to live, the way we are meant to live as God desires for us. We do search to pattern our lives, prioritize our attention, our time, energy. We seek and free ourselves from habits and relationships that bind or suffocate. We seek the, the right community, the right partner, the right job, the right calling. Sometimes we feel in sync, other times not at all. Sometimes we settle for what we've got. Oftentimes we have to settle for what is. We may not have a choice at this moment. Time and again, the question arises, the question as Parker Palmer asks, what is the life that wants to live in you? Are you living that life? This is what I would call a redemptive question. There is redemptive power even in the asking, hosting the question, is this the life that wants to live in you? You are the salt of the earth, said Jesus. You must retain your saltiness, express your saltiness. You are the light of the world. Don't allow your inner brightness to be smothered by others' expectations or overwhelmed by your own busyness. Strip away, return, reclaim the essence of who you are. Jesus spoke these words to the crowds gathered in what we now call the Sermon on the Mount, the Beatitudes. They're spoken not to one person in one particular context, but to each and all in our several and varied contexts. Jesus' call is universal. He does not say, be salty sometimes, let your light shine sometimes. Jesus says, you, all of you, each of you, you are salt, you are light. You already are who you need to be. You already have what you need. You already are the person who God calls you to be. There is not something outside yourself to acquire or learn. You need not seek perfection. You are the light of the world. Do not hide that light. 
This is what it means to live God's love. Each one of us has a calling in life, and that calling is to be ourselves. What is the life that wants to live in you? What is the life that wants room to grow, to blossom, bear fruit, be salty? Our vocation is to become more and more ourselves being of a different form than weasels, being beloved of God, living true to ourselves may open natural depths of compassion, creativity, awe, joy, love, community. The Apostle Paul, Paul was a learned scholar and teacher. Yet upon entering the church in Corinth, Paul says, I didn't come proclaiming the mystery of God using fancy words or highfalutin wisdom. I came to you as I am. I came in weakness, fear, humility, trembling. I came trusting in the Spirit, trusting that the Spirit would shine through me, trusting that the Spirit would be clear to you. I didn't want to persuade you up here with clever arguments. I wanted you to experience this within yourself. And when we know that the life we're currently living is not it, our saltiness is meh, our light is dim, shrouded, a mere flicker, What then? It's when we begin to ask the question, what then? Ask the question, how? How do I learn or remember, recover or discover? Then, now, in asking, we're ready to take the next step. I believe that next step is some version of paying attention, paying attention to our lives, to ourselves in this world. Be gentle as you seek. Be gentle with yourself and with those around you. We might go into the forest and watch, if not weasels, then other creatures. We might sit quietly in our own room in prayerful contemplation, noticing our breath, noticing in our body each inhalation each exhalation. We might try journaling or some creative practice that opens us. We might remember something that gave us joy years ago and make space to do it again. Or we might think of that thing we've always wanted to try, but it was never the right time, and find that time now. Trust, as Paul did, that the Spirit is moving within you. These practices are what Celtic theologian John Philip Newell calls listening for the heartbeat of God. Listening for the heartbeat of God, living like weasels. These are not steps we take and then are finished. We do not arrive. It is what we do each day. What we do becomes our life, and the living of our life becomes who we are. Annie Dillard concludes, I think it would be well and proper and obedient and pure to grasp your one necessity and not let it go, to dangle from it limp wherever it takes you, For then even death, where you're going no matter how you live, cannot you part. Seize it, and let it seize you up aloft even, till your eyes burn out and drop, let your musky flesh fall off in shreds, and let your very bones unhinge and scatter, loosened over fields and woods, lightly, thoughtless, from any height at all, from as high as eagles. 
Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gracious, loving God, you know the needs of our hearts and invite us to hear your voice and to follow you. Receive our prayers as we pray. God of grace, you love us and invite us to extend that love in friendship, generosity, and hospitality to all. Fill us with your grace that we may be a community of kindness and compassion. Guide our efforts as we strive to understand and most importantly, to dismantle the structures of racism in the church and in the world. O oh God of light, hear our prayers. God of peace, we ask you to guide all leaders in our nation, in the church, and all leaders throughout the world, that they will be instruments of justice and peace. Help us walk in your light and invite others to share that light with us. O oh God of light, hear our prayers. God of creation, you have woven our bodies in the depths of the earth. Look upon the needs of a suffering world and bless humanity. Bless us with the abundance of your spirit and presence that we may reveal you to our families, friends, and neighbors. O oh God of light, hear our prayers. Good and holy God, you fashion our lives day by day in your spirit. Increase in us your vision that we may see your hand at work in our community. O oh God of light, hear our prayers. We pray for all who are ill especially Catherine, Anna Gardano, Ken DeSell, Bob Erskine, Jack, Rose, Lisa, Jan, Cecil, Bob, Wendell Ballou, Meredith and Cecilia Mangum, Marissa Burke, 
Joy Ballou, Anne Romig, the people of Ukraine, Ali and Julia Hoover, and those we now name silently or aloud. O oh God of light, hear our prayers. Accept our prayers of thanksgiving, especially for the Basri family who received green cards recently. No easy task, God. The nursery school community and continued connections between school and church. The bishop and people of the Diocese of Washington who approved a resolution committing the diocese to racial reparations, that this witness to building a just society may spread through every congregation and throughout our nation. And those blessings we name either silently or aloud. Welcome your beloved community into your beloved community, those who have died. We pray especially for Marcella Keeler, Tom Perry, and Tyree Nichols, and all those we name now, either silently or aloud. For silver. O oh God of light, hear our prayers. Gracious and loving God, we come before you with no gifts but ourselves. Accept and receive our lives that we may be manifestations of your presence. Let the light of your spirit shine within and among us so we may share in the mystery of your purpose of blessing for all creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry. We humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. By the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you are able. The peace of Christ be always with you. It is a great joy to welcome you to St. Columba's Church this morning, a special joy to welcome those of you who are worshiping with us for the very first time today. If you're here for the first time, thank you for joining us. We're glad that you're here. Please help us welcome you by taking a moment now and fill out one of the welcome cards that you'll find in your pew, and you can place that in the offering plate as your gift to us today. I invite you right after the service to make your way next door into the common. We'll have a chance to greet one another to share some refreshments. St. Columbus is a church on a mission to live God's love. We seek to carry that out in a host of ways. 
I commend to you a couple of things, most of which are listed in the, uh, the connections, the little handout that you received as you came in today. Um, I want to emphasize in particular the gathering this Wednesday evening. Uh, there will be a presentation. I don't have the thing, so I'm blanking on his name, but the professor from Virginia and now Nebraska. He's talking about um, uh, discovery of a series of legal cases that challenged slavery in Prince George's County uh, years and years ago. And interestingly, because he's an historian and he was doing his academic work, he found his own family was tied to this as well. It's a compelling story. I invite you to join us for that on Wednesday evening and come before the talk and join us for the Wednesday night supper this Wednesday and every Wednesday night. We'd love to have you for that. Also, Tuesday evening, something very different. Join us for a labyrinth walk, either indoors in the Great Hall with candlelight or outdoors in the elements. You get what you get. Might see weasels, eagles, who knows? Um, I, lastly, I want to let you know that we are uh, seeking to hire a director of development and stewardship, and uh, I invite you to give some thought uh, to if you know someone who might be a good candidate for that role. And if you can think of someone, let them know to be in touch with me or let me know and I'll be in touch with them. I thank you for that consideration. Now let us walk in love as Christ has loved us and given himself for us a gift and sacrifice unto God.
God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to our sovereign God. God of blessing, we thank you always for making us in your image to serve the peace of all creation. You shared your name with our mothers and fathers, Sarah and Abraham, who left their home and became a blessing to all nations. Moses and Miriam, who went through the sea and wilderness to the place of salvation. Deborah and Samson, who gave hope and justice to a people ruled by fear. Ruth and Jonah, who went to foreign soil and found a God who loves the stranger. From our ancestors in faith came Jesus, the son of promise, to fulfill the law, embody your love, and draw all people to himself. He accepted death to break its fearful hold. He was raised to share life in an abundance. He comes again to break the bread and pour the wine of hope. Therefore, with all people whose story you have shaped, with women and men of faith in every part of the world, we glory in your generous love and sing in praise of you. We ask that your Holy Spirit fall upon us and upon these gifts, that these fragile and earthly things may be to us the body and blood of our Lord and brother Jesus Christ, who on the night that he was betrayed gathered with his faltering friends for a meal that tasted of hope. Calling them to his table, Jesus took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. As on that night, so here and now, Jesus offers all that he was, all that he is, and all that he will be. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, we come in memory and hope, responding to your call and the promise that echoes from the dawn of all time. May mind and heart be held by your self-giving love as we stand before the cross, approach the empty tomb, and praise the one whose name is lifted high above all earthly power. Receive our broken offering through your never-ending grace and bind us in communion with all who share your gifts. Through Almighty God, in whom from the beginning of time, through the great expanse of space, all things are drawn into ceaseless love of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours for all and forever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Whoever you are, wherever you are in your journey of faith, you are welcome in this place. You are welcome at God's table. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation.
Let us pray. Eternal God, you have graciously accepted us as living members, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. You have fed us spiritual food, the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace. Grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ the Son be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. with the light of Christ, let us go forth to live God's love. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God.